support the show, go over to our support store and get some awesome looking clothing. We got rock on hats, rock on shirts. The rock on hats are embroidered. Get your exclusive merchandise now. Rock on. Era begins again. What's up, everyone? How you doing? Welcome to the show. Man, I am lit, baby, lit. I am pumped up, ready to go. Yeah, I got to get better sleep lately, man. I haven't been doing it. Anyway, yes, we have a name for Umbrella Man. And guess what? It's not a Hell's Angel, like they were all saying. But it's a good point, too put out there. Why? Because civilians do not know the damn difference between motorcycle clubs, and that is the reason why one percenter clubs don't want pop-up clubs. Because all they do is bring trouble! This one has brought a little trouble, and boy, I wonder if the uh, 81 is pretty pissed off that it did. That's going to be our first story, because again, you know, we've been covering it extensively because I believe they need a scapegoat. But there's a very important lesson in this, man. Very important lesson. And hopefully you listen up to it. And hopefully those that are thinking about starting motorcycle clubs, go over to Black Dragon's uh, channel. Learn about protocol. Got to learn about some kind of protocol. If you're not going to go out on the streets, talk to a motorcycle club member, then at least go to his channel and get some education. Because what you're thinking about doing by starting a club out of nowhere is putting a lot of pressure on the already established clubs. Because what you do is going to affect them. And this story shows you that. Point blank, right on there. This is a story that went nationally and internationally. You had BBC and all them covering this. All of them covering it because it was a riot. Billions of dollars of property loss. And they didn't want it to fall on somebody like BMF or BLM, Antifa. No, they wanted to get it to where, hey... It's a white supremacist that did this. And then all the headlines came out. Hell's Angels this, Hell's Angels that. And it turns out so far, now, you know, you have the Washington Times, you got the Wall Street Journal, New York Times reporting this name, reporting this guy. So, you know, there's multiple sources doing this stuff. And when I actually looked at the picture of the guy, personally, I don't think they can pin it. If the, if the dude shuts his mouth, there's no way they can convict him because there's no damn way you can prove it's him behind that mask. But, like, you know, anything these days, people don't know how to shut up. <laughs> uh, another thing is, it, it was pretty funny, you know, people are saying, well, man, 81's been in the news all this time, you know, you, you know, it's like, damn, hey, man, I just report the news, who's in the freaking news is in the news, man, you know, I'm not gonna go out there and blah, 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 and no, yeah, we cover who's in the news. Uh, another thing, uh, a big thing, actually, you got all these freaking uh, virus experts out there crying and whining, about the 80th annual Sturges Biker Rally. They're saying it's going to be a cesspool. That's how it's going to start a big spread countrywide. Again, going after the damn bikers, <laughs> you know, in a different way. I don't think Sturges is going to have as many people as it usually does. What is it, half a million people that usually go? You know, with this virus thing going around, I, I just don't believe that's going to happen. Is it still dangerous? Personally, you know, I don't want to catch the COVID, man. I don't. You know, you have a lot of people that are saying, well, it's fake, it's fake this, fake that. Yeah, until you get it, then what happens? Then you'd be sitting there wishing you had, you know, wearing this or wearing this mask or taking baths and freaking sanitizer. 
It's no joke. So, you know, why take the chances, what I'm saying, man? Uh, if you don't care about yourself, what about your family? Anyway, they're saying this is going to be a hot spot. And I'm real interested. Actually, Lee, or, you know, I'll talk to one of the other guys over at Iowa Abate to see if there was any problems over at the Freedom Run with this, uh, you know, virus. But I'm not going to go as far as uh, Fauci. <laughs> that dude, man, is whacked. He's whacked. <laughs> Dude he has been wrong so many damn times and they're making him a superstar is what they're doing. Uh, but he's been wrong so many times and it's you, you find it difficult to know what to believe when it comes to this. So I take the standpoint just, you know, do me, stay away from me type of deal. I do know the flu season is probably going to be less bad. But, you know, if you're going out to Sturges, I'd be very careful. I'd be very careful at the concert, standing next to people. Because, you know, how are you going to, at a concert, how are you going to be six feet apart? You're not. So, you know, it's your personal safety. It's your personal freedom. I believe in freedom. Do what you want. But be careful, at least. So, yeah, that's what they're saying with the 80th, that uh, it's going to be a cesspool, that it's going to start. But it was just real interesting that... <laughs> couple days in a row now it's all been hidden at bikers man and this umbrella man has really started i believe a wave against bikers because these people are just running with it but when i read who it was and that it wasn't a hell's angel i was like man that's a good uh, educational lesson for those that are actually saying well it's my right to wear a patch it's my constitutional right remember that argument they always give but they don't see the back end of it, what their actions cause the clubs that have been around. Because citizens do not, and I mean do not, distinguish between what stupid patch you're wearing compared to one of the bigger clubs. And what happens? You go out there, you're being idiots, and next thing you know, the cops are knocking on the one percenters' doors saying, hey... You know, we heard this, heard that. They're sweating these guys. They don't need them kind of problems. And besides that, I don't understand. Why don't you just go up to the one percenters and say, hey, this is my ideal. This is why I don't want to join an already established club. Here is the color schemes I want to use. This is the patch schemes. This is what it means to us. How about, uh, you know, we like to get your blessing. Real easy. You get your blessing, and then guess what? A whole world opens up to you. A whole world. I'm talking parties with other clubs. You're meeting a lot more people you would when you just, you know, than you would be hiding from everybody. Because it's, you know, pop-up clubs, all they seem to do is stay in their backyard. Or go to a corner bar that nobody knows. And that's how they do their club. What kind of club is that, man? Don't you want to get out there and party with everybody? Get involved in COCs, NCOM, all that good stuff. There's so many more positives going through the traditional route than there is just popping a patch on your back. Who wants to, you know, you're supposed to be in the club having fun. Who wants to watch your back because you didn't want to go the traditional route? It's a very, you know point blank very serious question what do you guys think you know about you know pop-up pop clubs just going out and doing their own thing and next thing you know we have all this kind of trouble going on in the news so you know that's my opening let me know what you guys think in the comment sections don't forget Pound rock on, guys. And hit that like button. You ever notice, man, it don't even start off and I got haters out there. That means I'm doing my freaking job. Also, our new uh, Motorcycle Madhouse radio station is coming along. Been talking with a lot of people who want to do their own shows. If you want to do your own show on Motorcycle Madhouse radio, which is going to be everywhere, baby. We're going to have rockabilly, hard rock, blues. 
everything on this station. It's going to be awesome. Uh, email me info at insane throttle biker news.com. But let us get into the news and you'll see what I'm talking about. You're going to laugh your ass off at this one, baby. A name in Umbrella Man's case here Mitchell Carlson. Minnesota man named in Umbrella Man search warrant. This by Heavy.com. Like I said, there's all kinds of other news organizations reporting on this, but you know, I don't feel like paying for them. <laughs> uh, by Jessica McBride, there is the picture of Mike Mitchell Carlson and then the Umbrella Man. Not really a good picture, is it? You know, again, I do not see how they're going to be able to pin it on this guy. I, I just don't. He's wearing a mask. Who cares if he's the same height and all that stuff? Ask somebody on death row that's innocent. Well, they look the same as me, so I'm sitting on death row, right? <laughs> anyway, Mitchell Carlson is accused in a police search warrant application of being a Hell's Angels biker who may be the notorious so-called Ellen Brother Man. Authorities believe purposely incited violence. See, that's where they're going is violence. Uh, they're trying to get the scapegoat. In Minneapolis, by breaking windows at an AutoZone store after the death of George Floyd. And I can tell you, just by looking at the chest tattoo, he's not a hell's angel. Uh, but they get that screwed up more in the article, too. He has not been charged with the crime, but is under investigation, the application reveals. Uh, the application further accuses Carlson, who is a Minnesota man per his criminal history, of being a full-fledged member of the Hells Angel biker gang and a known associate of the Aryan Cowboys. Dude, they got this so messed up. They're so confused, they don't even know how to write the damn story. They don't know which one is which. There's two separate organizations. They're trying to say now that the freaking uh, Aryan Cowboys who are Hell's Angels are a known gang out of the prison system. <laughs> They're trying to lump in the Hell's Angels with this Aryan Cowboys. And if you're over on radio, come look at it. Uh, you can already see by the tattoo, this dude is not an angel. Actually, it's a white pride type of tattoo. Uh and of course, of course, the famous Anti-Defination League describes the Aryan Cowboy Brotherhood as a, quote, small white supremacist prison street gang based primarily in Minnesota and Kentucky. Its main symbol consists of a helmeted and winged skull with the initials ACB. But wait a second. I thought the dude was in Hell's Angel. See, this is what I was talking about. And I'm not saying the Aryan Cowboys is a pop-up club. I'm saying, th you know, this to show pop-up clubs what you can actually do to a one percenter club with a famous name. They're going to be all over the place, and they ain't even responsible for this crap. Carlson's full name is Mitchell Wesley Carlson, obtain or heavy obtain the application for a search warrant from the Hennepin uh, County Court System. Uh, you can read it in full. I did it on the last uh, segment, read it. Uh, ever since a viral video emerged of the black-clad gas mask wearing umbrella man systematically breaking windows before wide-scale looting and arson fires broke out in Miss Minneapolis, speculation has raged about his identity. Basically, they're saying this dude who's innocent until proven guilty and hasn't even been arrested, was the one who started all the riots. Yes, just by breaking some windows. You see their freaking way of thinking, man? It's disgusting. Uh, with some on social media arguing from the start that he was an outsider trying to incite violence in a riot, not a member of Antifa. Uh, there he is again, uh, again. Uh, nice bike. Rock, rock on, man. He's got some taste in bikes. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see here. Now it emerges that the Minneapolis police uh, believe Carlson might be the end brother man. Erica Christensen, a police, uh, Minnesota police officer, made the application for a warrant to search premises and property, including cell phone calls and text. She was also seeking the cell phone towers that uh, Carlson's cell was pinging off. Yes, mm -hmm. and then they go into the furl, uh, further of the story. Uh, 
Police believe that Umbrella's man's actions set off a chain reaction of looting and arson. <laughs> Carlson's Facebook page contains Nazi imagery. Hmm. Hey guys, get it off your social media pages, man. They can see everything. And that's what they're doing. They're using it against you. Other photos show him on motorcycles or giving the middle finger to the camera. <laughs> Everybody does that. In the comment thread of a photo he shared of a black man, people posted pictures of Adolf Hitler. He was also showed an interest in the Texas heavy metal band Pantera. Now they're calling Pantera freaking the races. He liked various Hell's Angel pages, but also pages called Prosecute Obama, Pissed Off White Americans, and Minnesota Gun Rights. You see their angle on that one? He liked Facebook pages about celebrities such as the Robinson Family Values. Are you kidding me? You're bringing Duck Commander into this? You schlucks, man. Oh my god. You're kidding, really? Ted Nugent and David Chappelle. A um, brother man walked westbound uh, away from the scene alone, the police application says. Do you see... How bad these liberal papers are. Uh, police received the tip that the umbrella man might be Carlson, who has a criminal history in Minnesota. Uh, there he is in a, he's not an angel, man. Uh, for days, uh, police watched innumerable hours of uh, social media, TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, YouTube, in attempts to identify him. No identification was made. Police worked with the Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms National Response Team also to no avail. Then came a break. Within this past week, they became aware of a tip that had been emailed to the Minneapolis police regarding this individual. The information was that the person responsible for breaking out the windows, who was known commonly as Umbrella Man, is Mitchell Wesley Carson. Oh, you gotta love the rats. You gotta love them, boy. They all come out. They all come out. Uh, the application uh, accuses him of being a member of the Hells Angels. And now, the Aryan Cowboys. They don't even know which one it is. You <laughs> Who wanted this so discord uh, and racial unrest? I hope the 81, the Hells Angels, sue the piss out of these people. Oh, come on, guys. You got to go sue them. Oh, man. You got freaking right here. You got it. According to the application, the tipster told police that Carlson is a member of the Hells Angels and that Carlson wanted the soul discord. Okay, which one is it, really? Even the co and then I'm reading this one thing here. Uh, even the cops know random damage attributed to Antifa are really white, racially motivated uh, violent extremists posing as Antifa members. Oh, my God. Uh, they also allege that Carlson was present when a Muslim woman... Hey, can you guys do me a favor and email these people? Just overload it that they're dumb nonsense. They just made themselves look stupid. They just did. Police allege that Carlson was present when a Muslim woman... Uh, was harassed by motorcycle club members in Aryan cowboy leather vest. Uh, it also talks about him be there. Uh, let's see what else we got here. <laughs> oh my God. Thank God it's over with though. This is like, uh, oh my God, this is like, eh, you know, fingers and nails on a chalkboard. Uh, so they got him down as a member of both the hell's angels and the Aryan Cowboys. Can we say, can we say propaganda at its best? There, uh, I cannot see 81 not throwing a lawsuit at this one. This is unbelievable, man. This is just messed up. And this is what a lot of other freaking places are reporting right now. Next story. We covered this one a lot. Rhode Island judge refuses again to step down from Hell's Angels case. There she is. Judge Christine E. Rogers. This by Katie Malvolny. She's been covering this one. Uh, she, uh, let's see here. Refused to step aside from a case involving two reported members of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club due to her husband's status. 
as a retired lieutenant with the Rhode Island Police. Judge Christian Rogers this week denied for a second time a motion by Joseph Lancia, 28, who authorities say is the president of the state chapter of the Hells Angels and pre-boarded full patch member Lance Moore, 55, that she recuse herself from presiding over their case due to the appearance of bias or impropriety based on her husband's two-decade career with the state police. Rogers is married to Littleton Compton Police Chief Scott Rains, who retired as a lieutenant with the state police in February 2018 after 24 years. Rogers concluded that Lancia and Amore have failed to prove that she possesses a personal bias that would impair her impartiality or sway her judgment. Chief Rains' past employment with the state police ended over a year before the events leading to the criminal charges in this indictment has no connections, real or reasonably perceptible, to the conduct of this trial or the pretrial proceedings that would create the appearance of impropriety. Thus, there is no grounds for this disqualification based upon either actual bias or the appearance of impropriety. It was the second time Rogers refused to step aside from the criminal case stemming from the June 2019 state police raid at the Hells Angels Clubhouse. Now, uh, we talked about this in previous segments. The dude was on a raid at this clubhouse. So, yeah, she's going to have bias because there's pillow talk. You cannot tell me that that judge ain't telling the spouse what's going on and he's giving his input. Right there is biased. On April 29th, uh, she struck down a similar uh, challenge raised by Lancia and Amor, but the judge agreed, quote, out of an abundance of caution to give the dependents additional time to convince her otherwise. She heard arguments in June with the state vigorously opposing uh, the recusal. Of course they're going to oppose it because they got their, the cards st- you know, stacked against them. Assistant Attorney Joe Earl Joseph McBurney dismissed as demeaning arguments that the judge would be swayed by her husband to favor state police witnesses. Why can't she just pass this off to another judge? No, she wants to be on this case big time. That right there shows you the bias. In a recent ruling, uh, Rogers rejected our arguments by Lancia's lawyer Joseph Baclow and Jason Dixon Acosta for a murder that she violated uh, court orders during the pandemic by issuing the April ruling. She cited emails in which she twice advised the parties that a handwritten wor- uh, that a written ruling was coming without objection. It fell within the court's distri- uh, discretion. Yeah. See, this is all messed up, if you ask me. Uh, hopefully, you know, they take it to an appeals or something like that. She should not be on this case. Not at all. Let's go out to Manu. Police Department identified three men in biker club shooting, but names are not released. In forum by Barry Amuston. Uh, North Dakota uh, police said Thursday night, July 30th, that three men sought in a shootout at an after party at the Ice Cold Riders Clubhouse in the city had by, been identified. Now, we t- we covered the Ice uh, Cold Riders all the time. They do a lot for charity, man, so I was kind of surprised at this. However, police said the names will not be released as the case will be referred to the Ward County State's Attorney's Office for review. If you guys didn't know, the incident uh, happened at about 2.30 a.m. on the 26th occurred as two groups confronted each other at the clubhouse during the Ice Cold Riders blacked out night after party. One group was leaving and another arriving and an altercation ensued that eventually led to an exchange of gunfire. Three victims had gunshot wounds and were all taken to Trinity Hospital by private parties. Two of the victims were admitted to the hospital and one was treated and released. Police had said earlier that they were looking for men ages 22, 26, and 42. Eh, you know, uh, keep your politics and stuff away from the host clubhouse, man. Yeah. Corey Dre- Graff's Wall of Shame. Here we go. Bayside, Douglas, in New York. Now, this is a surprise. 
Queens NYPD cop arrested, charged with tampering with evidence. Officer Kevin Martin, you're not wall of shame, baby, was arrested Thursday on charges of official misconduct and tampering with evidence. This by M Maya Kaufman. Uh, a Queens police officer was arrested. We get it. The accusations against Kevin Martin, who worked for the NYPD's 109th Precinct in northeastern Queens, stem from an accident on May 1st, 2019. The spokesman declined to comment further. Martin uh, received the desk appearance ticket to appear in court on a, uh, October 28th. Martin, 43, has been formally accused of misconduct at least 14 times since he started working for the police department. Six or 14 times, damn. Uh, investigators substantiated 18 allegations against him, including for improper stop and frisk, use of force, and offensive language, according to the records, which were obtained by ProPublica. He uh, previously worked in uh, 46... Uh, Precinct in the Bronx, and then he's been named in at least six lawsuits. Wall of shame right there, baby. Uh, let's go on to one more here. San Jose cop on administrative leave after rough arrest caught on video. Della Cruz. And I'm Ken Bastida. An arrest outside of McDonald's sparking some new scrutiny of the San Jose Police Department. API X5's Len Ramirez is live at the parking lot on Santa Clara Street, and he just got some new information about the officer involved. Len? That's right, Ken. Late breaking information from the San Jose Police Department. The officer primarily involved in the video you are about to see has been placed on administrative leave pending an internal affairs investigation of this incident. Seconds into the video, the officer is seen kicking a woman who was on her knees. Damn right he did. He then tackles her while a partner points a gun. A passenger and children in the car can be heard crying out. Then bystanders start shouting at the officers. The first officer handcuffs the woman behind her back and then drags her across the pavement. Damn! First. If anyone wanted a prime example of a use of excessive force by a police officer, this incident is one. LaDoris Cordell is a former judge and independent police auditor for the city of San Jose. She is kneeling on the ground. So there is clear there is no resistance. The officer initially kicks her in the abdomen. He grabs her and drags her across the asphalt so that her face is actually dragging on the asphalt to locate her I further seen her away knees, from the matter car. Face. Again, another excessive use of force. Police say the officer stopped the car because the vehicle was wanted for evading officers on July 18th and again earlier on Wednesday, but a police statement did not say why the vehicle was suspicious. The statement does say, quote, officers used force during the arrest after the suspect failed to comply with their commands. The department has initiated an internal investigation into this incident. San Jose Mayor Sam Licardo had a strong reaction to the video. And it's important for us to understand and for the public to understand fully what exactly happened. That being said, it's not obvious that that justifies the use of force that we see in this video. Mayor Licardo says he asked the police department to immediately release body cam video of the McDonald's incident, which is the latest in a series of controversies to hit the San Jose PD, including excessive force allegations stemming from Black Lives Matter protests and reports of a secret Facebook page in which officers exchanged racist posts. This is not about, in my view, a bad apple. This is about a bad culture. <laughs> Yeah, Len, as in all these cases where video is involved, we can only take it in the context that we see it. We don't know all the details. And I respect the mayor uh, for uh, his uh, insistence. There you go. Uh, what do you guys think of this one? You guys got to see the video. If you're over on radio again, come on over. But let's go into my uh, final thoughts and let's talk about this. Carrie here from Beggar Syndicate Cycles. Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market. Apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to baggersyndicatecycles.com and check it out. Mwah. Okay, thank you, Kara from Bagger Syndicate Cycle. Boy, I love that girl. Anyway, can you finally see... 
And I'm talking to the ones that just want to get out there and wild hog, baby. Just throw that patch on, get out there, room, room, and get out there and play the part. Do you guys see why that is not the best choice? For one, most of you don't know what the hell you're doing. Two, it brings a lot of heat on the motorcycle club scene that you want to be a part of. Now, I don't care what your personal reasons are that you want to start a club. I don't. At least do it right is all I'm trying to say. That's all. Because if you've seen the example, the story with Umbrella Man, everybody's been covering again internationally. You can now see why and how the mainstream media will take something like this. Pin it on a one percenter club and just run with it. We all got to admit the Hells Angels have a famous name. So why not pin it on them? It's just funny that the incident was a day afterwards when everything started going. They do not mention that in the article because they're dependent on people to be stupid. Not do the research, which they're right. That's what happens. That's why I wanted to make sure to cover this story. For those who watch, you can watch the previous segments of what we were talking about, how it led up all the way to this. Now, anybody and anybody who's seeing that picture knows the dude ain't a hell's angel. I can tell right by the tattoo on the front, and it's not club related. I just seen the tattoo and said, yeah, uh-huh. That's what it was. So, they kept on confusing the Aaron Cowboys with the Hells Angels this whole time because of that one incident where the woman claimed that they were harassing her. That's where this all started, and that's where they started to form this. Can you believe, because he liked Duck Commander, Willie Robinson, man, I love Duck Commander. I love it. That's what a family is supposed to be like. They're not racist. I think they adopted kids from Africa. Are you crazy? But because the media does not like their viewpoint, now they are calling them white supremacists because they don't like Phil Robinson's belief, which I think he's a hell of a guy. Me, I watched uh, Unapologetic or uh, something like that on YouTube. It's an awesome program with Jason, uh, Phil. They, it's a podcast. They do it, I believe, every other day or something like that. So go watch that. Unashamed is what it's called. Look it up. You'll like it. But the, now all of a sudden they're putting Ted Nugent in. And you notice the gun one? Yeah. All attaching to this one guy. That is why there's such divisiveness in this country is because of the media. Not only do they blatantly report false news, but they push a narrative that just drives people crazy and against each other. But I believe there's the most important lesson that comes out of this whole segment. It shows what everybody's been talking about with pop-up clubs. And again, I'm not saying Aryan Cowboy's a pop-up club. I'm just using the situation where the media and them confuse them. But everybody for years and years have been talking about this. Don't do it. If you want to say it's your constitutional right, go ahead, man. If you feel better that way, that's fine. But you're just hurting everything that you claim to love. Uh, I don't know how many times I can say that. Whatever the reason why you want to start a club, just do it the right way, man. That way stuff like this can be avoided. Because it's craziness. Why should everybody else have to suffer because of your ignorance? Say you go out to a bar and you're acting Billy Badass, start a whole big thing. Somebody gets hurt. Next thing you know, you're running out the freaking door. And all the civilians, all they seen was patches on you. And they're going to say, well, it was this club or that club. Next thing you know, it wasn't even any of them. Just like in this story, it wasn't them. And we all knew that, too. 
But the reporting on this is crazy. Now, this has went worldwide because New York Times, BBC, everybody's jumped on this. Because they want to make sure that it ain't Antifa or BLM getting blamed for all this stuff. Now, this whole thing, the billions of dollars, was started by a white supremacist. And you know what? You're actually going to have people out there that believe this story crap. Because they have no idea what it means. All they know is, well, the news says it was Hell's Angels. And they're associates of this. Come on, man. And that's why we do the news here at Insane Throttle is to make sure not only do we get both sides of the story out, but follow certain stories from beginning to end to make sure to point out all the freaking errors in the story and how bad that it's being reported. Hopefully, by doing that, we're opening some damn eyes out there. As far as Corey Graff's wall of shame, what can I say about that? Do you know how many people that are law enforcement email and threaten? I couldn't believe it. It's like, wait a second here. You're emailing me, threatening me, because I'm putting out your dirty laundry. I thought you weren't gangster. It's not like I worry about them, but I thought you weren't gangster. You're trying to keyboard gangster me here. What I have to say is make sure you hold your people accountable. I guarantee most of the stories that Corey Graff uh, sends me, I bet took six months to a year, probably even more, before you guys decided to turn on your guy because we all know about that uh, blue wall now don't we takes a long time for somebody finally to step up and say hey what you were doing is wrong and against your and it's against your oath that you took see that's what separates leo and bikers you took an oath you took an oath to do a job your honor's at stake not ours you're, you know what it is? And that's why I talk about that line all the time. If I'm doing something, okay, it's your job to catch me. But you got to play by the rules, and we don't. When you start stepping over that line, that's when that badge really don't mean nothing. Well, it doesn't, but you know, you know what I mean. That's just like your boy Steve Cook. That schluck. He got out there talking all kinds of that smack about Ohio. All kinds of smack. There's two situations that are is going to come out of that. It depends on the video. One, they weren't members. Two, they weren't members. And you know why? They were either civilians or the second scenario was they bought fake patches over the internet. But according to the witness that sent our, his, uh, I don't know, his account of it, he knew some of the people there, so you know he was there, said they had nothing to do with it. But you got old Steve Cook out there, Pat, you know, what he always does, talking his smack like he's some kind of biker expert. All he tries to do is get in front of a microphone or in a news story or on the TV. That's how he makes his living. He ain't even a cop anymore. His claim of fame was what? A couple guys from Kansas? And now all of a sudden he knows what's up. Like these big bad bikers. They terrorize everyone. Well, from what I see from Corey Graff's wall of shame... It's you guys that are, ter you know, <laughs> doing what you're doing. So, what do you guys think, man? Umbrella Man, that's who they are reporting. Let me know what you guys think. <laughs> what you guys think of that uh, video at the end of the show, man, where they're dragging her? Man, and cops wonder why people are upset with them nowadays. 
Don't forget to like the show, Pound Rock On, man. Come on, let's see some Pound Rock On. With that, I'll see you Monday morning, you guys. You guys have a good one. I said goodbye, goodbye Babus, baby. Adios, ciao, so long. Get your hat. Don't down. forget to go over to HarleyLiberty.com. Get all your motorcycle club news. What's happening in the scene? We have a new article or articles every single day over at HarleyLiberty.com. And don't forget the sister site, BikerLifestyleMagazine.com. If you're into all that kind of manufacturer motorcycling news, motorcycle rallies, and bikers helping the community, motorcycle club editorials, and more. And don't forget to visit us on Facebook. Get involved in the conversation. Watch videos done on Motorcycle Madhouse and more. Also, we have Instagram. Yes, Instagram. We have material that is not seen anywhere else. So don't forget, get on our platforms. Check out your daily biker news. Rock on. Hey guys, this is Kara from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. I just want to let you know about a place where you can get the greatest apparel. Top of the notch, all the baggers, bikers, and brotherhood. And ladies, don't you worry, we didn't forget about you. Check it out at BaggerSyndicateCycles.com. Yo show is now available on Spotify and all major platforms, including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. Don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube channel and get Motorcycle Madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the throttle today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.harleyliberty.com for your daily biker news. Rock on!